Hello, everyone. It's the GSP Coffee Podcast, and we are back after some vacation. Today, our guest is Andrea Romasum, front-end engineer and the founder and tech lead at Sweatrix. It's a Ukrainian startup with a similar range of services to Google, but provides traffic analysis services based on the absence of cookies, tracking, and data sales. Hello. Hi. Uh, today we are talking about your startup, Sweetrix. Uh, please introduce it in a few words for those who have never heard about it. Uh, okay, so Sweetrix is a simple and privacy-oriented uh, web analytics platform, which gives you all the needed data to run and manage your online business without uh, the need to keep a huge amount of uh, personal data of your users. And uh, one of the reasons why we created Sweetrix is that we believe uh, that uh, privacy is uh, essential uh, human right and uh, that we are fully compatible with GDPR law. And, Here's uh, the that... next question. <laughs> oh, please stop. Uh, there is a Google Analytics and it works and many services use it. And what point did you realize you could even something better uh, just uh, you some say about it uh, and simply but when did the idea for Sweetrix come about? The idea to create Sweetrix came about uh, 1.5 years ago, and uh, we wanted. I want. I initially wanted to create a uh, Google Analytics alternative for one of my others' project, because uh, Google Analytics, honestly speaking, uh, sucks. It's very huge platform where the regular user doesn't use. 90% of features it provides. So we decided to, I initially decided to create a simple and privacy oriented platform. And uh, about half a year later, uh, some other people joined this project. And um, these people are uh, my personal friends. And after they joined, our team grew and grew. And now there are about 12 people including developers, designers, testers working on this project. Uh, okay, you involved two friends in development, uh, um, whom you already mentioned. Uh, that's uh, Yegor Drumluga and Maxim Bull. Uh, tell us about how responsibilities are divided in your team. Uh, Maxim is uh, a tech lead on this project. He uh, mostly focuses on creating the website, um, making, uh, he is mostly focused on the front end part of the development of the website. And uh, his responsibilities also include managing some uh, other teammates who work on this project. So basically we create tasks which are need, need to be done. And uh, I manage some portion of people and he manages other portion of people. While Yehor is focused on uh, the backend development of uh, the project, he makes the APIs, he makes uh, integrations with uh, some services like Telegram, and uh, he's focused on data science, uh, artificial intelligence, and uh, such things. Um, uh, and you? I am focused on uh, both front-end and back-end development, but uh, right now we have some people who work on the back-end development. So as for now, I'm mostly focused on front-end and uh, managing people and uh, advertising the project, like uh, writing some blog articles, uh, set up, in, set up in, uh, advertisements on these articles and so on. Uh, okay, what makes uh, your startup unique? You uh, you have uh, uh, you have competitors performing similar functions, for, for example, uh, clausable and simple analytics. Uh, yeah, we have some competitors uh, besides Google Analytics, of course, and they uh, they include uh, simple analytics and Photom and uh, plausible and so on, but. Uh, Unlike them, we 
we provide all the features they provide. And besides, we also have a huge amount, a huge quantity of unique features. And uh, these features include different uh, browser uh, extensions to simplify the usage of our service. Uh, they include uh, a new feature which will be released in about one or two weeks. This is a super unique feature. It's called Swatrix Marketplace. So basically this feature will provide an ability for people to create and sell custom extensions for uh, our analytics dashboard. For example, uh, some person uh, want to customize in any way possible the analytics dashboard to display some other uh, charts, to display some custom tables, uh, do anything they want, and they can upload this extension to our marketplace and provide it for free or sell it for some uh, uh, money and uh, so on. And of course, we are open source. That's our main uh, um, advantage compared to services like Simple Analytics. So uh, this makes us transparent and uh, open to other developers who may join our project at any time or analyze it or do whatever they want with the code. It's super useful. Uh, in the last interview, you said you have 135 free and two paid users. Uh, how has that number changed now? Right now, we have 253 uh, users in total and uh, about uh, eight, eight or nine paid users. It, it grows, um, it started growing about it started growing really fast about one month ago after we released the new landing page and started uh, publishing more articles to the blog. So uh, it uh, grows uh, month by month. Uh, tell some words about your business model and uh, uh, how do you manage to cut costs? Uh, more specifically, uh, are you able to cut costs? Um, our business model uh, called uh, freemium, and uh, that means that we provide some basic uh, services free of charge, and uh, some amount of money is charged for additional features or uh, services or, and so on. And that means that we have free uh, tiers on our platform, and uh, user can sign up on our website and use our website totally free of charge. And uh, the costs for these free users are covered by people who are using paid tiers. And uh, by our calculations, uh, one paid user can cover about 100 free users. So it would be profitable for us. And uh, the point of uh, free tiers is to allow small websites, uh, owners of uh, small websites to integrate uh, Swatrix into their projects. And in time when they grow uh, and become profitable, they would buy eventually paid tier. So it's uh, a great uh, business model, I believe. Mm, sounds good. <laughs> uh, with the beginning of the war, the startup had to relocate. Uh, your address used to be in Vinitsa, but now is it in Warsaw. Uh, why did you make this decision and how customers' opinions, uh, opinions influence it? Um, actually, I'm located in Vinitsa right now, but some of, most of, some of my team uh, relocated. For example, Yehor Dreamluha and some other teammates are currently located in the United Kingdom. Uh, I'm located in Vinitsa, in Ukraine. And um, it- uh, But it's uh, not about your address, it's about address of startup, of, uh, about Switrix. Uh, Switrix is a Ukrainian uh, company, a Ukrainian startup. 
Uh, okay, uh, did you relocate uh, sweet tricks uh, uh, with the beginning of the war? Some of the team is located outside of Ukraine. You are working in IT in Ukraine and you uh, did not go abroad during the war. Uh, how it affected your work and might be, uh, and maybe your work with customers? How the war affected uh, the startup? Uh, the startup uh, and your work uh, as uh, IT specialist. Honestly speaking, uh, my work as IT specialist was not affected that much. Um, I wouldn't say that in in uh, in my work a huge uh, something changed For, i know that uh, a lot of companies a lot of people lost their jobs because of the war because the clients outside of ukraine are afraid to work with ukrainians because of the war but uh, fortunately uh, it did not affect me and uh, sweatrix um, actually uh, it it, it was easier for Swatrix to grow. <laughs> it may sound it may sound controversial, but it is easier for Swatrix to grow during the war because a lot of people from uh, the Western countries, from the United States, from uh, European Union, they know about the war in Ukraine. They um, want somehow to help Ukrainians. And they see that Swatrix is a Ukrainian startup, so uh, they prefer Swatrix over our competitors who are not Ukrainian. It uh, it made Swatrix easier to gain some users. Yeah, it's an opportunity. Uh, okay, uh, what are the development plans for Swatrix user? And uh, are you planning to hire new employees, for example, to outsource? When we grow, yes, we will hire uh, em new employees, new people. Um, uh, right now, we are uh, on the seed stage of our project. It it uh, barely provides um, uh, money for us to, uh, to to earn to be profitable. But when it grows, maybe in a year, maybe in uh, two years and it becomes really profitable, yes, we will hire uh, people. We would need to hire some uh, marketing specialists uh, and uh, project managers because we have a lot of developers and it's very hard to manage all of them and uh, to advertise our service. That's why we would need to hire these two categories. How will you hire your specialist uh, in-house, outsource or out staff? I would probably hire them directly into our project, some Ukrainian developers. Uh, okay, so and the last global question. Uh, how do you see the future of startups in Ukraine? And do you know the secrets of a successful startup? Ukrainian startups should not only focus on uh, Ukrainian uh, market, but uh, they should focus on American and European markets too, because um, American and European markets are way more bigger than Ukrainian. And on our example, most of our users are either from the United States or from uh, the European Union. Only a small fraction of uh, our users are actually Ukrainians. So uh, it's crucial for uh, startups to be open to any market to, of course, besides Russian and Belarusian markets, to be open to any market, to uh, be multi, uh, multinational uh, startups. And how about all the secrets of uh, successful startups? Mm. Some insights maybe from your job and from your experience? Be open to any market, uh, communicate a lot with uh, customer. For example, uh, try to uh, customer, if, they, if customers find some issue in your project, they would not write you about it. They would simply stop using your service and go to your competitors. 
So it's crucial to communicate with uh, your customers. Sometimes you should write to some fraction of your customers, ask them what they like about your service, what they don't like. And uh, some of the people will reply. And uh, that's how you would be able to improve your service. So it would be um, more successful in the eyes of these customers. These are two uh, secrets, in <laughs> my opinion. Okay, thank you for the interesting conversation and I wish you new achievements. Thank you. The guest of the GSP Coffee podcast was Andrei Rumasun, with whom we believe in and develop Ukrainian startups. Stand with us and support Ukraine.